this kind of unprecedented naked political intervention into our criminal justice system, I fear will have um, sweeping effects for our public safety here in Travis County. Today, state officials are working on a pardon investigation for Daniel Perry, the man convicted of murdering a protester in 2020. Over the weekend, Governor Greg Abbott said he wants a pardon for Perry less than a day after he was found guilty of murder Friday. CBS Austin's Michael Atkinson joins us now. Now, Michael, at the center of this, Republicans really are frustrated and don't like Garza. Exactly, and that's been one of the efforts this legislative session from Republicans wanting to, quote, rein in district attorneys that they are calling, quote, rogue. But that legislation is more about charges prosecutors don't pursue. Now, Abbott and other Republicans are reversing their criticisms for Travis County's district attorney over the charges he did pursue. It only took 22 hours after a guilty verdict against Daniel Perry before Governor Greg Abbott announced over the weekend he wanted to pardon Perry for the 2020 murder of a protester in Austin. Abbott tweeted Saturday afternoon he had requested the state's board of pardons and paroles to begin working on Perry's pardon. Just the night before, Abbott faced criticism from Fox News commentator Tucker Carlson. So that is Greg Abbott's position. There is no right of self-defense. In Texas. Abbott almost directly responding to Carlson by mentioning the state's stand your ground laws. It seems like he was spurred by the attention the case has gotten from national media, in particular the the personalities on Fox News. And it's hard not to, you know, think that that had some kind of impact given the speed with which this happened. Much of Republicans ire is cast towards Travis County District Attorney Jose Garza, a Democrat elected to the position in 2021. The legislature needs to address malicious prosecutions and prosecutors who are not doing their jobs who are not prosecuting real crimes. This guy ignores real crime. District Attorney Jose Garza speaking with me Monday afternoon, where I read him Paxton's comments on Fox and Friends. You obviously were laughing as I read that quote to you. What do you make of it? Well, the, the Texas Attorney General um, is currently under felony indictment and under a federal criminal investigation. He should probably worry about his own um, legal troubles. If the Attorney General and the Governor want to spend their time pardoning convicted murderers, that is up to them. As national questions arise about the politics of prosecutions, this pardon has fallen in a partisan debate. Democratic State Senator Sarah Eckhart, herself a former county judge, called the potential pardon a stunning and dangerous abrogation of the rule of law. There is inherent politics that is in the system, um, and that's not ideal. Over the nearly two-week trial, experts, witnesses, and both sets of attorneys painted a picture of Daniel Perry's movements on July 25th, 2020, the night he fatally shot Garrett Foster at a Black Lives Matter protest. Perry, a Fort Hood soldier who was in downtown Austin driving for Uber, called 911 after the shooting. The subsequent police interview played before jurors. Perry was booked and charged a year later in July 2021. Did you arrest Daniel Perry? No. Why not? Because there was a legitimate argument for self-defense. The trial didn't just focus on the night of the fatal shooting, but Foster's activity and Perry's social media activity and private messages in the weeks prior to the shooting. First, we see this message from Perry on May 31st, 2020. Author Daniel Perry. I might have to kill a few people on my way to work. They are rioting outside my apartment complex. June 1st, a message pertaining to a YouTube video titled Protesters Looters Get Shot in San Antonio, with Perry saying, glad someone finally did something. Private messages between Perry and a friend from June 13th were also revealed. The subject matter, what qualifies as a good shoot, and discussions of various protest shootings. Plus, what guilty man would turn himself in? He could have just gunned it with a metal barrier as a cattle scoop thing like they have in front of trains and shot a lot more people. I will not deny he was in fear for his life when he shot the guy. In that same June 13th conversation, Perry told his friend that he keeps his revolver under the floor mat and a pistol in the glove box. On the night of the protest, Perry's revolver was in between his seat and the center console. Safari searches revealed Perry looked up protests happening in Austin and Dallas. Make sure you only use one shot on the protesters so if they try and flood you, you got enough grounds for all of them. I'll only shoot the ones in the front and push the pedal to the metal. Foster was openly carrying an AK-47, which is legal in Texas, the night he died. 
Austin police that were working during the July 25th protest revealed the department knew of a person known now to be Foster who carried that weapon at protests and it raised concerns within the department. Did you have a conversation with Derek Foster where you expressed concern about the way he was carrying his AK-47 and ask him or encourage him not to carry it that way? Yes. Did he agree with you? Not at all. Did he vehemently disagree with you? Yes. Some of Foster's social media posts were also entered into evidence, including this Facebook post from July 7th, 2020. Where Derek Foster says, feel free, I'm in Austin, Texas. I've been at damn near every protest. I'll be the armed one. One of the main arguments centered on whether Foster pointed that gun at Perry. Ultimately, jurors did not agree with the self-defense argument and found Perry guilty of murder on April 7th.